Welcome to McDougal. On this show, legendary singer Grace Slick will tell you things about animals that I dare you to ignore. Hello, I'm Wayne Judd. And now, here with a free prescription for your mind, Dr. John. People think of prescription, they, they usually think of drugs, don't they? They think of That's medications. Right. They That's don't right. think of, but, but a prescription can be education on diet and lifestyle. Yes, why not? Uh, my prescription, prescription to you would be to eat well, go for a walk every day. For the mind. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So, well, you know, what do you going, have here? Well, I was going to ask you about headaches. It's something you and I haven't talked about, and I've had yes. headaches all my life. And whose pills are these? Well, these are mine. I just have a little assortment that I carry with me everywhere. You honestly? take those pills. I do. I, I took several this morning, John. I've been, I've wanted to, I've been putting it off, but right. I knew sooner or later I'd have to confess. So can I just, can it, I just sure. <laughs> kind of That's ask amazing. you about these? You know, do you know, Wayne, sick people take drugs? Now, what does that mean? I, uh, Healthy people don't. So we have to, we have to deal with this. We have to get you. Well, let me just tell you my problem. Right. I've had headaches all my life. Okay. And so I've experimented with the different things. Now, I'll use this as a pointer. Uh, these are, are aspirin here. Uh, these are, it, what is the generic for Excedrin? Acetaminophen is what it's called. Acetaminophen. But Excedrin is usually an aspirin. If it's more than two syllables, I have trouble with it. also, unless it's aspirin free. Okay. okay. And uh, then, then here, here is a product that's over the counter now called Aleve. Okay, that would be a naproxen, I believe. Naproxen, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so, so those are non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like, like Advil. Right, right, yeah. exactly. Okay, and this is ibuprofen here, of course. Again, like Advil. So you got several, Same a couple thing. of those. I, these are still kind of left over from before. I had a physician once prescribe this. Uh, this is um, uh, amitriptyline. Oh, that's an antidepressant. Yeah, I know it is. Because this show really has been getting to you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, his point was that, his point was that, that this... This uh, as I understand, they give it for for, for, for people with chronic pain. For headaches, yeah, right. and it, and it kind of helped. Now oh, these here are, are the, the word silver appears on them. They're right. big, and, and and you take them after you're 50. You know what those are, don't you? They're vitamins. Okay. Okay. Well, anyway, there's other stuff. And you have in Imitrex, here. which is well. What I did is I got a, I, I have sumatriptan in case all else fails. I can I can actually give myself a migraine. shot. All right, but let me let me, let me ask you. I mean, are you, a still, are you thing. still getting migraine headaches? No, I'm actually not getting migraines anymore. But I, what was the difference? Well. The difference is that they're easier to kill if they come along. No, what made the difference for you not getting migraines now as opposed to three months ago? I don't know, unless it's the diet. I you Would that make a difference? You your diet. I did yes. change my diet. Migraine headache suffers, uh, when you look at it from the point of view of food allergy, uh, you get a 70 to 90% relief of migraine headaches in people. And this is published in the scientific literature. Now, m the most common cause of food allergy is dairy protein and then it would be eggs. And some people are intolerant to certain vegetable proteins, but usually it's the dairy and the eggs that if you get off those, many, many people who suffer from migraines get relief. Mm. The dairy also causes uh, sinus headaches in many people because it causes uh, uh, closure, swelling of the sinus tissues, and, and you get accumulation of, uh, of fluid and so you get you, headaches. So you think diet has a lot to do oh, with tremendous, headaches even? Tremendous, tremendous. Well, we haven't talked about that before, and I thought we might. Well, uh, I think it's important that we do yeah. because, the, because otherwise people end up like you, Wayne, and that is that they're, they can see the only solution to the problem is pills. But yeah. actually, diet and lifestyle. Now, let's not, the diet is a very, very important one, but let's not miss a couple other things. Uh, caffeine is very important. When to people, do or not to do? Well, people can get headaches from drinking caffeine, but most of the time they come from withdrawal from caffeine. Okay. And that can happen. Say you have a cup of coffee in the morning, then late in the evening you may go through withdrawal. Or on the weekend you may drink less coffee than you do during the weekdays, and so you have withdrawal and you get headaches. And, of course, every serious alcohol drinker knows about the, the association between alcohol and hangover yes. and headaches. Yes. And so there are lots of things that people have the potential to control. And so before you say, you know, I'm just a, a headache sufferer and there's not, nothing that I can do about it. I mean, consider your diet and your, also your, your beverages. And uh, cigarette smoke would be another one that people may get headaches from. The the thing with, but, but I'd like to ask you a question. I, I think, for example, one of the reasons I take pills is not because I have headaches. And this is going to sound a little silly, but... Preventive, I, right? Well, yeah. You know, you talk about people being afraid of cancer, people being afraid of prostate, people being worried about heart disease. Yeah, but these things have serious side effects. Uh, yeah. Well, my point is that I'm afraid my greatest fear medically is, is the headache, the debilitating headache. Okay, do you, and so I, I do this as a preventive. Have you ever considered that since you've changed your diet, then maybe you won't get a headache? I ought to try to go cold. You ought to do it a test. You ought to do a test. You ought to see if you can live without the pills. Would there be some? Because these pills have serious side effects. Okay. They're, they're associated with, well, for example, Tylenol 
and a little bit more than recommended doses can cause liver problems in people. Mm -hmm. Tylenol can cause uh, kidney problems in people. Yeah. Uh, aspirin has been associated with kidney problems, with intestinal bleeding. Your <clears throat> non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, like uh, the ones we mentioned here, mm -hmm. are associated with very serious stomach distress. Stomach and problems. I know problems. my stomach is distressed. This morning right. I took one of these, and I took one well, of these, and Wayne, I took one I think of since you've these, made that and one of these. I took four <laughs> pills this morning. I think since you've made that bold step, and uh, besides the fact since you're associated with me, you owe yourself the, the big test. See if you can live without the drugs. This you is can do it. You uh, can do it. No right. question about right. it. Well, thank you, John. Yes, and when we come back, we're going to be with Grace Slick, and it's going to be a great, great segment. So I look forward to it. Your kids can too. Just watch Hello Channel. And welcome back. We have with us Grace Slick. She was with the Jefferson Airplane. Are you doing any performing these days? No. Not at all. Stopped about what five What do you think minutes. about our discussion of, uh, of pills? You, uh, you have a reputation in the past of being involved with pills a bit. Um, yeah, well, there was a line in a song, one pill makes you larger, mm -hmm. one pill makes you small, but right. I was never very much of a pill head. Uh, I got in trouble with, uh, liquid. <laughs> Alcohol? Yeah. And that, those days are behind you? Who knows? I hope so, but yeah. who knows? Mm -hmm. For now. I, mean, I can't, I can't uh, predict anything. You've also made some pretty, pretty radical changes in your diet over the years. Yeah, that, uh, started with, um, a sort of a, I don't know if you call it a moral attitude, it's just that, uh, I realized how, what I felt about uh, a couple of animals, who, both of whom happen to have black eyes, a panda and a raccoons. Mm -hmm. And I thought I couldn't eat those. Well, nobody does. So do they? what if? Yeah, the Chinese occasionally will eat it. Used to. Disgusting. And pe yeah, people went out coon hunting. Called mm -hmm. coon hunting, eat raccoons. They still do. Mm -hmm. But I thought uh, George Bernard Shaw, although he's made some errors in political judgment enjoying Hitler and so forth, uh, did say, I, w I don't like to eat my friends, animals are my friends. So that, that was the way it started. So you got to a healthier diet yourself? Through the animals. Through the animals. You know, then I so started, many people do that. Then I started mm. studying biomedical research and realized that uh, it's healthy for us to not eat any animal products right. and we aren't built to eat. Uh, we aren't carnivores. Yeah, but your main concern would be for the other creatures, not the human beings. I mean, it that's was. How you, it was, but, but now you care about... We're them. selfish. Now yes. I sort of care about myself. I have... Well, Grace, like, I don't think that's I unusual. I have dairy slips, and oh. you were just talking about something that's very interesting, because I've got a THC, or they call it THJ, or whatever they call it, a jaw. Temple mandibular yeah. joint. Yeah, and you were mentioning the sinuses getting... Uh, would, would dairy have anything to oh, do with all, that? Oh, yeah. uh, You know, so, I about 60% noticed... of the people that come to my program at St. Lena Hospital have post-nasal drip, sinus trouble, headaches. Within a week, almost every one of these people is free of their post-nasal drip, sinus, hoarseness, and uh, headache problems. One week, because we take them, of course, all, off, all, the, all, all the dairy is gone. Yeah. Skim milk, whole business. So you the, think that's a good thought meat, for you? The meat, fish, chicken, all that kind of stuff, I didn't have a problem, but I yeah. had a problem with dairy. Was, oh, look at that cheese. Well, that's your next step. And you know, people, well, you could even take it from an animal rights point of view if you wanted. I, I have I know. A, little hard, a little trouble relating to this, but a lot of people think it's, forget the people, worry about the cows. Well, I got Look at how hard they got to work. But people don't care, really, okay? Yeah, I, I think If you're talking do. to people who are not no. animal rights, you're not going to win them over by saying, you're hurting a raccoon, you're hurting a uh, cow. They're going to, hey, Grace, screw That has it. not been my experience. My experience has been, and I had this, there's a, there's a movement called Farm Animal Reform Movement, Farm, yeah. okay. This group originally, originally was interested, uh, or, or their propaganda, their advertisement was for people. You know, let's, let's eat a vegetarian diet to save people's lives. They got, they didn't get any donations at all, no support. Mm -hmm. They became the Farm Animal Reform Group and they can hardly open the envelopes fast enough from the donations. From an animal standpoint. Huh. Yes, I think people, I think more people get to vegetarian eating through concern for animals then get there for concern for their own, their own selves. I, I believe really? it. Yeah, I, and of course, that's not my perspective. I try and 
get people to healthy eating because I want them to be concerned about themselves and their spouses right. and children. But people just love animals. So I think what you're doing is, is going to bring a lot more people to their senses than what I'm doing. Yeah, my daughter did it that way. She looked at a, <clears> a picture of a pig and it says, does your food have a face? And she just stopped, bam, like that. No dairy, no nothing. This mm -hmm. is years ago. Right. She's better at it than I am. I still go, I'm really self-willed. So if I like something, by God, it's, you know, it's one of those moron attitudes that will get mm -hmm. you in trouble and usually does. <laughs> and I can confirm what you've said because in my case, I've only been a vegetarian for maybe five months. Um, when I thought I would be a vegetarian at one time in my life or along through life, I always thought it would not be for my health because I was healthy. But breeding to kill was something that I took seriously and it bothered me for many, many years growing up mm -hmm. on a farm and butchering animals and so on. I was used to it at that time, but the longer I lived, the more the concept of breeding to kill didn't seem like a very humane or, or, or good way to live. Mm -hmm. I think the American Indians have a take on that uh, as far as meat eating, which they do uh, irregularly. And somebody I, I was talking earlier, wh what's the culprit? A refrigerator. People could not keep meat. They could True. not keep dairy. And the only people who were dying of the stuff we're dying of now were very wealthy. They could send out somebody to go kill a deer for them. They could send out somebody to go milk the cow. But the poor people have always died of uh, viral diseases, not 100%, but for the most part. And the rich people die of excess. And mm -hmm. it's still kind of that way. But now more people have access to uh, rich people's food, meaning meat and dairy. And uh, it's like Dr. Neil Bernard said, I've never pulled any broccoli out of anyone's arteries. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's real easy. To think you ought to see the fat. Oh, I saw one of those videotapes of a guy pulling, and it looks like a, a snot yellow worm about this long out of a guy's arteries. This is just dairy products. Anybody want to give up uh, dairy products? <laughs> well, if you think about it, people I'm have... I'm sorry, this is not that kind of show, is it? It is, it's that kind of show. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you think about it, it's very easy for people to be introduced to a new fruit or vegetable. Yeah. And we could go out to this audience with a, a new fruit or vegetable that we had from, say, uh, another country, the, a new name and everything, and they would try it, I'm sure they would, but what if you brought them a new animal to eat? Say we had a, a, mm -hmm. a new uh, kangaroo or, or, or a dog or a, a, some kind of animal that they wanted to try, they would find it repulsive, just like they get upset when they find out they're serving horse in the hamburger stand down the street. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they close them out of business. Or when I went to France and found out they served horse on the menu. It is naturally repulsive to think about eating other animals, but because the human being is so adaptable, we've gotten used to doing such bizarre things it also as doesn't eating look pigs like and it. cows. And In other words, you, you get an apple, it looks like an apple. Mm -hmm. But you get a hamburger, that doesn't look like a cow. And chicken, I mean, it looks and, like and its own really thing. And they really don't call a cow, do they? No. They call it beef or a hamburger. Yeah, and right. a chicken doesn't look like a chicken. It's a bunch of they chunks of something. They call it pepperoni sausage. Yes. They don't call it, look at this little piece of pig on my pizza. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fried dead Animal chicken. rights, that's what we're talking about. Well, we're going to find out about your, your concerns for animal rights and the things that you've been doing, Grace Slick, and I know you've been making a, a big difference, and it's great that you've got your name out there and uh, you're converting people and getting their interest. And we'll be back in just a moment with Grace Slick. <laughs> Give your family everything. Give them your time. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Hello. 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 I'm with a woman who has no trouble getting attention and publicity, and that's Grace Slick. You're in the news all the time. Do you want to elaborate? Forget it. No. <laughs> Everybody knows the stories, Grace. But with your with your publicity, you've taken you've turned it around to something that's nonprofit, and that's your concern to help with animal rights and experimentation. Is that correct? I mean, that's one of your big things, right? You don't want us to do animal experiments. Well. Experiments on animals for human good is when the way. When you say you don't want us, what do you mean? Us I'm, medical doctors, I, us guys. I'm, 
uh, I mean, got butting heads with the medical community. That's right. I, I, you know, I still do think of myself as a real doctor, even though I'm a renegade. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, since they, uh, the uh, systems on animals are different from our systems, and mm. my system is different from yours, it's that uh, tricky. Why uh, spend that much money on something that has uh, such... So you feel the, the results are irrelevant, and yeah. you know you'd get great argument. Have you been yeah. on shows Let, where... In other words, let's separate um, morality mm -hmm. from science. Let's say it, it doesn't matter. Let's sure, say they don't have souls. They don't all care that, all about the animal have. rights. You just want to kid... Their you. construction is different. Mm -hmm. In other words, you would not put bananas into your Mercedes, would you? Mm, I, I don't... Because it is built... Any eat, idea what that has to do with it, but go because, ahead. Because uh, animals are different. They have different metabolism. Yeah. They're quadrupeds. Like I talked to this guy who was studying hip replacement mm. by using greyhounds. That's a quadruped. We're bipeds. Mm -hmm. How, what are you going to learn on something where the back, our backs are always going out because we're bipeds, and that's a lot of weight to carry okay. in a different way. Do you think always, there, under all circumstances, animal research has been uh, useless or could have been done better without animals? That's always the question, and I think... Is it always mm -hmm. better to or brush you think your we teeth just be, Or do you think we ought to just be more, more uh, discriminant about it and, and make sure that we don't do experiments that really don't end up bettering humankind? But how can you know before you start? So wouldn't well, it be there, more... There are things that would be quite obvious. Uh, let me sit, put it this way then. Wouldn't it be more cost effective mm -hmm. and wouldn't you indeed save a lot more lives if you were to promote with the same amount of money that goes into biomedical research prevention? In other words, you stop it before oh, well, it happens. Prevention doesn't pay any money. We can't do that. Rather than putting, you can't make, doctors can't make money on prevention. Neither can drug companies. Forget it, Grace. It's a waste. <laughs> Why slit your finger and then put a Band-Aid on well, it? You know, Why not not slit the finger? You don't have to worry about the Band-Aid. Now you're getting too logical. <laughs> <laughs> That's not like you. <laughs> uh, I do understand uh, I do understand the concern. And, you know, I've had a chance to talk to a lot of, a lot of people who are concerned that we do we do experiments on uh, animals that are unnecessary. I remember when I went through medical school, and back in those days, I, I thought a lot different than I do now, but we had to do surgery on dogs. Mm -hmm. And now that I look at it, it was completely wa complete waste of a dog. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned End nothing of, your time, of my your time, mind. right? And, and I did find it even disgusting then, but uh, I, I can see where there are many, many circumstances where it's, uh, it's not worth uh, the expense of an animal's life and the suffering of an animal's life uh, to, for education, educational pur 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 purposes and also experimentation. I have no problem with that at all. I think the, the only question I still do have in my mind is, is can we extend that to always? And I know that you are convinced it's always. Well, I think if, because um, uh, I've done shows with this gentleman before, if uh, people were to pick up what you're saying mm -hmm. about how to eat and how to live and so forth, you wouldn't need that stuff well, anyway. Well, listen, we'd save so many lives, we'd have to, we'd have to invent new diseases, get rid of all the people, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Wayne, do we have any questions from I, the audience? I think we do. I think we have a few questions we'll take from the audience at this time. And Here's, people respond real well to you, don't they? I mean, in terms of... If uh, they don't have blue uniforms on, they generally no, respond no, to me. No, really you don't well. do well with those, yes. We have a question from a gentleman here. Um, do you, have, do you consider eating fish as an unhealthy diet? Because, you know, some Oriental culture, they consider fish as, like, source of protein and calcium. And yeah, right now stuff. you can probably get more gin out of a fish meal and mercury and stuff like that. That's one of the problems if you don't take the animal uh, rights agenda but take just human, is that there's a lot of crud in the fish itself. That's, mm -hmm. That would be from that point of view. So the, That's a you problem with fish. categorize fish? To the same, you know, like do you put in the category of beef, fish, and chicken all in the same? Or kind of because because of the toxins. from an animal? Yeah, but how about from an animal rights point of view? Do fish suffer? Yeah. I've heard they don't. I've heard fish don't mind getting killed. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why you see them going like this on the end of a right. hook. Right. They right. don't I've mind done, that. They're just having fun. I've done commercial salmon fishing. So why can't men go deep. up and just hang out, like, and look at the trees and everything? You know, why do you have to be killing something <laughs> while you're looking at the trees? I don't get it. Mm -hmm. You, you've got a lot of support there. <laughs> we have another question. Yeah, I was wondering, when you first became a vegetarian, how did that impact, like, your relationships with, like, you know, your, your family, your friends that weren't vegetarians? Like, if you'd go out, let's say, for dinner, and they were all, like, you know, wondering why you couldn't eat what they were eating, and, mm -hmm. and how did you deal with their reactions at first? Well, rock and roll helps, because uh, I have a, a serious attitude problem. 
and that is I do what I want. You want your steak? Fine, kill yourself. I mean, I don't see why, you know, you don't, you don't have to worry yeah, about it. How about it. a little kinder answer to her? Like, maybe she could tell her, well, as you do in your home, you eat your thing, and you let your significant other eat his. Yeah, see, we're and learning you, all the time. I'm trying yeah. to learn how to be gracious right. instead of saying... You're doing better, Grace. That's why they gave you that name. John, we have time, uh, I think, for one, one more, more quick question. question. Yeah. I agree with Grace on the moralistic value about animals. But if you're breeding animals, and they grow, and they grow. Where do we go from there? Yeah, they're a crop. Uh, somebody was mentioning that earlier, uh, one of the fellows backstage, is breeding animals uh, was what made him crazy. Uh, the American Indians have gone hunting. In other words, we were talking about uh, the refrigerator being a culprit. Uh, if you remove the moral thing, if you eat uh, some animal fat in the form of dairy or animals or something once in a while, it probably isn't going to kill you. We can, we're sort of omnivorous. But, um, uh, but, but how about just from the, the moralistic breeding point of view? Breeding a sentient being <clears throat> and keeping them packed in and shooting them up with antibiotics which come back to you and hormones which come back to you. I was going to ask you, does that uh, uh, annihilate possibly right. the way you could use uh, an antibiotic if you keep putting it in there through meat? In other words, you're, you're negating when you really need an antibiotic. It's too antibiotic. complicated for me, Grace. We're going to have to take a little break, and I'll have to think about this. And we'll be right back with Grace Slick. really needed to hear that day was what my dad told me. He said, you're never a winner if you lose your temper. Life's most important lessons are best learned with family. A message from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Thanks for watching Hello Channel. Learn the language of the internet travel, commerce, and diplomacy. Watch Hello Channel and learn English. Do it for yourself. And uh, welcome back. We're with Grace Slick from the uh, Jefferson Airplane. Ex long, long, time <laughs> long time ago, but that's how they know you, except that's if they okay. read the newspapers. Then yeah. they know you from other things that's that right. we won't talk about. Uh, people get to healthier eating several ways. They get there for concern for the environment, which mm -hmm. is good. They get there for concern of animal rights, which is your issue, which uh, I have great respect for. Or they get there like uh, I've been trying to preach for a long time, and that's yeah. concern for human beings. Selfish is okay. You want to live better, live longer? Right. Why not? Yeah. The accomplishment is, is the same, and that is we have uh, less slaughter of animals, no matter how you get here. Yeah, that's true. And you don't worry about the economics of the people you're uh, making life difficult for. I mean, those that grow the animals. Exactly. Well. Just, I feel as sorry for them as I feel for the people who grow tobacco. All right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. what, what else can I say? It's a dying uh, industry. There, there, there are other industries to get into, and uh, why should somebody eat a diet where you get breast cancer, your kids die mm -hmm. from uh, childhood diabetes. I mean, it just makes no sense at all. No, sorry, Wayne, I will not buy that excuse. All right. <laughs> Grace, you're doing absolutely wonderful work, and uh, you know, I Well, we're on for all it. in this together. We really are. Okay. I really applaud you for having me on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're doing a wonderful job. Just keep it up, okay. and let everybody know about it. And thank you very much for, for being with us, and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.